Welcome to the channel guys. I hope y'all are having an amazing day. I could not have asked for any better weather out here in Texas. There's a slight breeze going on. I hope y'all can still hear me well. Um, but it's currently 66 degrees in early February here. The weather is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I decided to come out to one of the properties we have access to to pig hunt to change out the batteries on one of the cell cameras because apparently there's a big freeze coming within the next week or two. I don't really want to be out here whenever that's going on. But I also came out here to show you guys the rigs that I've been running. Um, I got into the thermal game about a year and a half ago whenever I first got into college. And I have learned so much through that year and a half. And I have loved every second of it. And I hope I can share my experiences and the gear that I use with you guys. Because there really is nothing like thermal hunting. So we're going to start off from the lower. Then we'll work our way up to the upper. And finally we'll talk about the thermal. But this right here is my baby. If you see me killing pigs, nine times out of 10, I'm running this rig right here. I absolutely love it. Um, starting from the lower, this is just a standard 5.56 radical lower that I bought whenever I first turned 18 with a different upper. Came with the B5 stock and grip, and honestly, there's no complaints. Um, I love the Magpul stuff. I love the MOE grips that have a a compartment down in the grip this does not but there's really no complaints about this lower right here the one thing i did change on this lower is the trigger this came with the standard mil spec trigger honestly there's nothing wrong but once you start feeling an aftermarket trigger you never want to go back to mil spec triggers um, this gun is unloaded i already checked before i started recording but um, the trigger i went with is the larue flat face trigger uh, for the money, you honestly can probably not find a better trigger unless you find something on sale. Um, I paid $89 for this, and it has been a phenomenal two-stage trigger. We'll shoot left-handed right here. There is a slight take-up for that first stage, which is two and a half pounds, and then the break is going to be two pounds. Super crisp. The only problem is on the reset... Whenever you start going forward, it slightly pushes your finger all the way forward. So you have to go back into taking up that first stage again and into the second stage. But for the money, you cannot go wrong with this trigger. Um, I also changed out the... Oh, I forgot what this is called. I just went blank. The trigger guard. I got an uh, enhanced trigger guard. Uh, so if I'm running gloves, I can stick my finger through that without any problems. Now let's move on to the upper. So whenever I first bought the lower, it came with a Radical 5.56 upper. I am honestly not a proponent of using 5.56 on pigs. I've done it before. Plenty of other people have done it before. Amontine, if y'all have not seen his YouTube channel, I will link it down below. He is an absolute killer with 5.56223, especially in a bolt gun. Um, honestly, my dream is to hunt with him one day. He just seems like such a cool guy. But me personally, I want the most forgiveness possible while also staying within a reasonable price range. That's why I decided to go with the Caliber 7.62x39. Up until recently, you could find it anywhere. Now everything is going overseas, um, but I'm stockpiling enough where I don't have to worry about that. But back whenever I was buying ammo, um, I was running... You know what? Let me grab that real quick. So I went and bought a bunch of, hopefully y'all can focus on that, um, 762 by 39 Wolf Steel Case Hollow Points. And I think I was paying 40 or 42 cents a round for these, which is phenomenal for a decent hunting round, especially with pigs. You're not necessarily spraying and praying, but you're trying to pull off as many shots as possible, kill as many pigs as possible. So I decided to go with a cheap round and the 762 by 39 does wonders. So the upper I decided to go with was a 762 by 39 Bear Creek Arsenal side charging 16 inch upper. I've heard a lot of bad things about Bear Creek Arsenal, but I and Kyle, Kyle has two Bear Creek Arsenal uppers in 6.5 Grendel and 762 by 39. We have had almost zero issues with them whatsoever. Um, the only problem that I hear people run into is whenever they buy it brand new um, 
the thing about Bear Creek is they don't really have the tightest tolerances because they're trying to mass produce all of these in uh, in house. But uh, if you receive an upper from them, I would honestly just strip everything off and put it back on, tightening everything possible because that is really the only problem I've been hearing about them. Now y'all may be asking why I decided to go with the side charger. Running any sort of scope or a thermal, if you have a rear charging handle, it's very hard to access it unless you have some ginormous aftermarket like a Radian Raptor, which are amazing charging handles. But I decided to go side charging because it's so much easier accessing it without the scope being in the way. Also being in the 762 by 39 fashion, the classic AK-47 round, I feel like you kind of have to. The only problem I have run into um, was the bolt carrier group, not the bolt carrier group, the firing pin in the bolt carrier group after roughly a thousand rounds of fire, it broke. That isn't something that's too uncommon with the 762 by 39 if you're running steel case because of the harder primers. Um, Bear Creek has an enhanced firing pin, which they shipped with this but it also does not have the tightest tolerances. I decided to replace the firing pin with a Red X, I believe it's a Red X Arms uh, 762 by 39 firing pin, and I have had zero, um, zero problems with it since. I've put probably another five or 600 rounds through this, and it's a much higher quality firing pin from everything I've heard. So other than that, this is now an amazing upper. Y'all can also see the, the paint job going on here. This is actually something that I did myself last year because I was bored. Um, it's just uh, a red paint pen, put in all the crevices, and then use some isopropyl alcohol to wipe the access off. I've been thinking about taking it off because I don't know what it how I feel about it anymore. It's starting to turn pink. <laughs> Maybe I'll spray paint it, um, but we'll just see how that goes. Now let's move on to the magazine. So the magazine I decided to go with are the 20 rounder uh, C Products Dura Mags. I have not ran any other magazines, but I have only heard bad things about other magazines. And everyone says, if you're running a 762 by 39, go with C Products, don't go with anything else. Y'all may be asking me why I didn't go with the 28 or the 30 rounders. The thing about those magazines is whenever you have a 28 or 30 rounder, the way that the 762 by 39 round is built, there is an insane banana clip after about that 20 round mark that runs into the problem of uh, hitting your tripod or hitting up against you if you're carrying it on a sling. That's why I decided to just go with the 20 rounders and I bought two of them. I just keep a... Um, an extra mag in my back pocket and just switched it out. I've had to run in that problem before. Whenever I'm gunning down pigs, I have to switch mags, but it isn't bad. Um, I would definitely go with two 20 rounders over a single 30 rounder. And finally, the moment y'all have all been waiting for the thermal. Um, this right here is the IRA Rico Mark I 640 35 millimeter. This right here, this is my second thermal. Um, I'll show y'all my first thermal. Um, in a little bit, but I decided to upgrade from my 384 to a 640 resolution and I am so glad that I did um, The main reason I decided to go with this thermal Was this was an originally a $5,000 thermal. I already decided to discontinue it um, Back in early September of 2023 and I decided to hop on that deal. They were running a $2,000 deal. So this was $3,000 You cannot find a well, actually, I believe the AGM Rattler, you can find the 640 for under 3000 But other than that, you cannot find a good quality thermal in 640 resolution for that $3,000 mark. Um, I have had zero problems with it. I love that it records audio. I love how clear it is. Um, I love that you can do three different profiles. I have it saved on this uh, rifle on my 5.56 and on my 22. Um, the only thing I changed out was the uh, mount. It came with a, a more bolt action style mount, which I mean, I don't, I, I hope I can run a bolt action in the future, but as of right now running ARs, I decided to pay the extra $200 and I switched it out with an ADM mount. 
so many people, um, what's the word for it? They're skeptical about these ADM mounts. With this return to zero function, I know it definitely sounds odd. It sounds impossible like witchcraft. I have been running ADM mounts on this and my uh, AGM Rattler for the past year and a half. It always goes back to zero. I always take my thermals off whenever I go back to my dorm. I leave my rifles in the truck. I take my thermals with me whenever I go hunting. I slap them back on in the exact same spot. Make sure I'm set to the right profile and I am holding zero. The ADM mount is probably one of the best investments you can make in optics. Um, even even uh, beyond thermals, even regular scopes. Regular scope rings, ADM makes them, return to zero mounts. If you want to take it off, put a different scope on, or you have a thermal and you want to switch it between different rigs, I feel like it's a must to have the ADM mount. I wanted to quickly go over the way I attach my rifle to my tripod. Um, I'm going to have a whole separate video about my tripod setup, the different, um, what's the word for it? Different upgrades I've made for it because this is a bog death grip, a very low end tripod, and I've made it a decent tripod working from the ground up. Um, but I decided to switch away from the clamp and go into the Arca Swiss world. It's much sleeker. You lose so much weight. That clamp from the bog pod is probably a solid two, three pounds. Um, but this is a newer um, ball head mount. Once again, I will make a whole separate video about this tripod. But um, I went with, I honestly, Zelnox is the brand of this Arca Swiss plate. Hopefully y'all can see that well. Um, these are like 20 bucks on Amazon and it has been phenomenal for me. Um, the only thing I recommend doing is making sure to screw in those, uh, at least one peg, even better if it's two pegs to the front because carrying this um, on your shoulder is the way I do it. I carry the tripod on my shoulder, rifles dangling behind, um, or whenever you're constantly shooting. If you don't have that peg in, this gun is gonna slowly work its way off and fall off. Um, I almost learned that the hard way, luckily I didn't, but that is the only tip I have for that. Now this is my second setup, my buddy rig, um, if you will. So if I ever take a friend out that doesn't have a thermal, this is what they'll get. Hopefully I can upgrade the upper at some point because this is a 223. Like I said, I'm not a fan of 223556. Um, once again, starting from the stock, um, this is the very first lower that I ever built from scratch. Um, this is a Palmetto State Armory strip lower that came for free with a PSA dagger that my dad bought. Uh, the internal kit I went with was the Strike Industries Enhanced Trigger Guard Kit. Not Trigger Guard Kit. Trigger... Internal Parts Kit. The trigger I went with... I love this trigger. I mean, look at it. It looks so sexy. This is the AR Gold Trigger. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This is a $300 trigger, but it is worth every piece of that $300. Um, for one, it looks phenomenal. For two, once again, uh, gun is empty. Look at this. This is a single, they, they say this is a single stage with take up. Slight amount of take up. Hold on, safety off. Slight amount of take up. Pound and a half. I honestly don't, well, I don't run this rig just because the paint job on my other AR, I'm going to be honest but I love this trigger. Um, the reset, one of the shortest resets on the market. Check this. Barely moved it, already reset. If you have the funds for it, the AR Gold trigger is phenomenal. This is the adjustable trigger. I don't know what it's adjustable to, but I have it down to a pound and a half. I love the trigger. Moving on to the furniture, I have the MOE stock, not stock, MOE grip. With the compartment, I keep a, a microfiber cloth in there and a optics tool um, if I'm running some kind of red dot. On the back, I am running, oh, I forgot the, the company. Fab Defense, I believe, the GL Core S, which is really meant for uh, smaller uh, short-barreled rifles. 
because there is a bigger version, but I didn't know that whenever I bought it. But honestly, I'm still happy with it. Even though it's small, it's still comfortable. Um, and I guess that's it for the lower. Let's move on to the upper. I'm not going to lie. I know almost nothing about this upper. I bought this upper as one of those deals at the gun show where it's some unbranded one. have no idea what brand this is. But it is a 223 Wild Barrel uh, Stainless Steel 16-inch, which... Sorry, 223 Wild is supposedly more accurate, which 223 Wild isn't an actual caliber, or it's not a it's not a cartridge, it's a chambering, which is uh, best used whenever you're running 556 or 223. It's designed to be more accurate, combining the best of both worlds. It's hard for me to explain. If you want to look more into it, I guarantee there's plenty of YouTube videos on it. Um, I guess that's it for that. Uh, key mod, of course, I have another Arca Swiss Rail also. This is also Zelnux, but in the key mod version, very happy with this, um, with this Arca Swiss plate. And now let's move on to the scope. So this was my very first scope. This is the AGM Rattler TS25-384. Um, I paid $2,000 for this. And as my very first scope, I believe this is the best bang for the buck scope there is um, whenever I bought it. Now there's the new Sightmark Wraith Thermal, which I've honestly been very pleased with. Uh, from the, from the, there's doves flying everywhere. With everything I've seen, it's been a phenomenal scope, but it's still fairly new. I don't know how well it'll hold up, but Sightmark is a great company, and I believe they're also run by Pulsar. Um, back to the AGM, though. Um, I decided to go with the TS-25 because I hunt a lot of close quarter Texas areas. If I was hunting more open fields, I would upgrade to the 35, get that higher base magnification. But the TS-25 does phenomenally for me, and I ran it for a solid year. No issues whatsoever. This actually has five different profiles, so I can put it on five different guns. Um, same, another uh, ADM mount. Once again... Um, absolutely love running it. The only complaint I have about this scope is the battery. This runs off two CR123s. Two CR123s are going to run you 20 bucks, and it'll last four hours in here. No time at all. You are going to be racking up money, spending money on batteries. That's why I decided to go with a battery pack. I would show you the battery pack, but I've been filming this for so long, my phone died, and it's actually charging right now. Um, but I mount a battery pack right here with a ranger band and then just like standard phone battery the little round one uh, By anchor put it right there and I connect a USB-C cord to the scope and I get a 10-hour runtime recharge it It's free other than paying for the initial um, battery But like I said for the money this scope is phenomenal Now y'all may be asking me why I have two thermals um, whenever I found out that the 640 IRA was having a big sale, I needed to jump on it as fast as I could before it sold out. I have been saving up for thermals for three or four years now. I decided to buy this because I couldn't wait any longer, but I still had money saved up. And whenever I found out about that, I had to get on it. The reason I decided not to sell this scope was for one... I wanted to be able to take out friends that have never been thermal hunting before, and I wanted to introduce them to the game. Um, for two, if I'm not taking a friend, this is going in my bino harness, and I'm using it as a scanner. You don't know how important it is to have a separate scanner along with the thermal until you really experience it. Instead of having to take your rifle off your off your shoulder with the tripod on it, of course, set it down, spread the legs, and scan every minute, I can have that on my shoulder the entire time and scanning the entire time without having to do all those extra movements. That is why I decided to keep this thermal right here, and I could not be happier. I forgot to mention the magazine that I use with this setup. I use almost exclusively uh, Magpul P-Mags just because... PMAGs are, in my opinion, the best on the market. I've tested a lot of magazines. I have never had a single 
issue with these whatsoever. I'm pretty sure the military uses PMAGs. If you have an AR-15, I guarantee you have a PMAG laying around somewhere. I have plenty of 30 rounders. I decided to get a 20 rounder once again, um, having problems with running into the tripod legs. Those 30 rounders are a little bit longer. The 20 rounder doesn't have such an issue. I also have a 10 rounder, um, but I have zero complaints with the PMAGs. Now with my ammo of choice, once again, I like to stay cheap because I shoot a lot and I like to save my money. So I try to go as cheap as I can at the same time having a a good quality round so I'm, i i don't like shooting fmjs i know some people do those people like to shoot them and they like to see their pigs run off i like to see my pigs dead that's why i decided to go with a soft point but at the same time this is a pmc 223 55 grain soft point and i was paying i think 10 or 11 dollars a box 20 round box so about that 50 50 to 60 uh, cents around, which is a phenomenal price for a hunting cartridge. Um, oh, I completely forgot to talk about groupings with these guns. At 100 yards, with this unbranded upper and this uh, low price ammo, I can get... Oh, and with the thermal. With the thermal, from my experience, you're going to be a little bit more inaccurate, but about a two inch group same with the sem 6 2 by 39 but also i'm running lower quality cheaper ammo well that wraps up the rigs that wraps up the video it's actually starting to become dark really fast um i hope y'all learned a thing or two because there is really nothing like thermal hunting it's so beneficial especially in places like texas uh, there's such a big hog problem going on in texas it's unbelievable um, the farmers love that um, there are people like me that can come out and take care of their problem. And um, I love the fact that I can share those experiences with you guys. Um, so make sure to subscribe. I would love for this channel to grow a little bit more so I can show my experiences being a college student and still enjoying the outdoors. As always, my Instagram is also in the link, not the link, in the description. Make sure to follow that to see all the behind the scenes, all the hunting posts before I post them on YouTube. Uh, my email will also be down in the description for any possible business inquiries. IRA, if you're watching this, um, that would be awesome. And I guess that's it. I hope y'all have an amazing day and I will see y'all in the next video.